enable participant screen sharing. Ee, şey yapabilir miyim? Ee, paylaşım izni alabilir miyim? <gülüyor> tamam. All right. Let's switch back to English. Uh, again, good evening. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Din Charjure. You may, as you may already know, um, uh, I am currently working. Um, I currently work at the Aydın Adam Menderes University in Azili Vocational School of Health Sciences, Health Services. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, being a physical therapist in the USA. Uh, physical therapist and physiotherapist is the same thing, but the Americans <laughs> want to be uh, different. Uh, they like to uh, seem different, uh, so they call it physical therapy. Um, so uh, since, uh, let me start uh, by saying how I went to the United States back in 2002. Uh, I got the papers uh, in the mail. Uh, from the U.S. Embassy. Uh, my aunt has been living in the United States for the past 45 years. So uh, it, uh, I was in 11th grade. So we, we my father decided to go. Um, after that, uh, when we arrived there, I started high school uh, at the 11th grade, but I had to, uh, 12th grade, but I had, I had to complete another year of 12th grade, so I finished high school in five years. So I had to um, complete uh, the required credits. They have a credit system there. So I <laughs> finished up high school when I was 19 years old. So, uh, but it was good because I learned English. Um, uh, I made the soccer team, uh, you saw from the photo. Uh, it was a good thing. And you know, I didn't actually um, regret my decision to go there. So I made an outline. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I did, um, what kind of experience that I had, uh, what schools I finished, uh, what I majored in. And then we're gonna talk about the physical therapy education and admission uh, system and process in the United States. Then we're gonna move on to um, a talk about working as a PT in the United States and what to expect. Uh, and what kind of fields do PTs work in? Uh, and we're gonna talk about specialties because we don't have specialties in Turkey at the moment. Um, so, and then we're gonna uh, continue with the questions and answers, the Q and A session. Uh, you probably have some questions for me at the end of the day. <clears throat> so, at the University of Buffalo, I majored in exercise science because there is no four-year degree in physical therapy in America. Uh, so the closest thing, closest major to PT was exercise science for me because, you know, it's all about exercise. What we do is um, therapeutic exercise. So I decided to major in exercise science, but in my class, in, uh, in the DPT class, we had people um, from business backgrounds, business management. So <laughs> they majored in business and they completed the prerequisite, like the required courses, the fundamental courses uh, to be able to, to be success, uh, successful uh, in the DPT program. So I finished up my exercise science degree in 2008. Then I moved on to Duval College, uh, got in to the Doctor of Physical Therapy program, spent four years there, um, completed my thesis uh, in 2012 and graduated with a DPT degree. After that, uh, I got a job right after my graduation, a month after, at the University of Rochester uh, Medical Center, specifically in the uh, Strong Memorial Hospital. Um, I was the physical therapist for the organ transplant and surgical intensive care units. So I had two units, two services. Why? Because uh, in the organ transplant, we specifically treated patients with kidney diseases, liver diseases, kidney and liver transplants. So after the surgeries, they are um, moved to the surgical ICU unit. So I can, I saw them from the beginning, from day one, 
to the time they dis they're discharged from the hospital, either to home or subacute settings or medical rehab units, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But then what happened? Why did I come to Turkey? <laughs> um, <clears throat> Back in uh, March 2013, I met my wife in Turkey. Uh, you know, all this love stuff, you fall in love and, you know, you lose yourself. Uh, and then I, I was thinking about coming back too. Um, so I decided to move uh, back to Turkey in May, May 2013, two months after I met my wife. Uh, so that's how it happens. It's, it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with my job, my profession. You know, everything is great in America as far as uh, the physical therapy profession goes. <clears throat> physical therapy education, it's, it's different. You know, I've been trying to tell all the students about this, all the graduates, um, to practice as a physical therapist in the US, you have to earn a doctor of physical therapy degree. Uh, it's a seven year, uh, program from scratch from like uh, you, you first have to get your four-year degree your bachelor of science degree and then you get into the dpt program which typically uh, lasts for three years so that's seven years to become a physical therapist in the united states then again you still even that's not enough you have to pass a state lunch licensure exam but that's a board exam um, that's different for every state some state has a passing score of 70, some state has a passing score of 75. Uh, that, that's different, but uh, they all have 250 questions and you have five hours to complete those. Um, this is one of the things that I think we should have in Turkey. I don't know if you would agree, uh, uh, Sarah Bojong. Uh, yeah, you are right. Uh, but the higher, educa higher education is not accepting this but we are working as an association yes. we should wow. have both examination yeah. that'll if we do that'll strengthen uh, us as physical therapists because if a patient asks you what kind of qualific qualifications do you have all, all you're going to show is your four-year degree and we need something else right, besides your four-year degree besides the physiotherapy mm -hmm. degree you need to have a specialty. You need to have a board exam that you pass. You know, you, you need to have maybe a five-year degree, more professional degree. So uh, that'll strengthen our hands when it comes to negotiating these terms with uh, state or government agencies, you know, uh, with the Department of Health, you know. So <clears throat> this is one of the things that I really want to see in Turkey. You know, I think we, we, sh we should still push for it. So... Like I said, the length of the uh, education is three years uh, following the four-year degree. Uh, most of the program consists of classroom and laboratory settings, like 80% of the program. So if you have an orthopedic uh, class, which I'm sure we, uh, we have that here too, uh, a lab component follows with it too. Pediatric, pediatric lab. Uh, neuro neurological uh, rehabilitation, uh, you know, the neurological rehabilitation lab. Uh, things like that. Approximately 20% of the program consists of clinical education, like your internships. Um, and they usually add up to 27.5 weeks, but I, I did six weeks, eight, eight, and 12 weeks. So mine was 34 weeks of internships. That's a long uh, time in three years. So, uh, and I learned a lot of good things. Uh, the first internship, I was in subacute setting with the elderly, usually. The, it, it was a geriatric setting. The second one was outpatient uh, orthopedics. Third one was the best one. It was, uh, I treated specifically coronary artery bypass grafts uh, uh, patients. So they have uh, open heart surgery in the morning. And in the afternoon, I go there and walk them. Now, it was amazing. Like It's the same day. They have a cabbage surgery the same day, early mobilization. You know, we do, if you, if, you, if you can't walk them, we at least get them out of the bed, put them in a chair. Um, and usually a team of uh, four. So we have a respiratory therapist, which is different from a physical therapy. 
because they have a two-year degree, associate's degree, uh, physiotherapist or physical therapist, and two nurses. So uh, we get them up and walk. The fourth one was, again, an outpatient orthopedic clinic, and it was an amazing, uh, I worked with an amazing um, mulligan therapist. He was amazing. He, um, he was specialized in mulligan and uh, myofascial release techniques, and I learned a lot, of, uh, a lot from them. Uh, primary content areas in a PT curriculum. Usually you, you have your usual classes, you know, you know, anatomy, physiology, exercise physiology, biomechanics, neuroscience, pharmacology, pathology, um, and some behavioral sciences. Not everything that you see on here uh, we had in a, my program, <clears throat> but usually clinical reasoning, evidence-based practice, they were the core uh, classes other than the anatomy and physiology. Cardiovascular and pulmonary was, was there, musculoskeletal, finance, Similar to finance, we had a class uh, regarding owning your own business and establishing your physical therapy business. Like in Turkey, we have the Salih Piyasham Merkez, you know, uh, something like that. Uh, they really um, emphasized the importance of owning your own business there. <clears throat> so this is something that is recommended uh, to students with a Bachelor of Science degree, with four-year degree, uh, to follow uh, before applying to a DPT program. I put this on here because some people are, some students in Turkey are thinking of applying to some DPT programs in America. So <clears throat> they usually recommend uh, students to research DPT programs and requirements at least two years before applying because um, Every single university has a different um, admission process. Um, they have, uh, so you have to check them out first uh, before applying to the program. There is a centralized system, like it says complete courses, complete prerequisite courses. Prerequisite courses means uh, they're the courses that you need to complete to apply to the DPT program. And every single university has a different set of prerequisite courses. So uh, first you need to uh, get them in the, uh, in the pool. You need to complete them before applying. You might be able to apply to, let's say like New York University, but you can't apply to Columbia University because you didn't take an abnormal psychology class. So it's very, very different. You have to pick those universities one by one and then um, fit your own schedule into their uh, prerequisite courses uh, schedule. Uh, the other important thing is the PT observation experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, typically they required you to observe at least 100 hours of physical therapy. Uh, that is a great way to find out if you're a good fit for the profession uh, before applying. You know, they're telling you, if you don't like it, don't waste your time or our time, you know. <clears throat> uh, the other thing that you need to take, usually you need to take uh, the GRE exam, graduate record examination. That's uh, similar to ALES in Turkey. Uh, even the, I think the content is similar, but the English uh, portion is really tough. Like it's a lot tougher than YDS, like ADS say here. Um, I took it. <laughs> Uh, the English portion is like Shakespeare English. It's very tough. Uh, all those wordings and stuff like that. Even the Americans are uh, not able to do it. But the mathematics part was uh, easy enough. Um, they also require references uh, from your college professors, uh, from your uh, fellow PTs. Um, it says if required, but they all require it. Uh, I never had any, I never, I've never seen any uh, university that didn't require uh, reference letters. That's really important also. And it says apply early. Um, some of them has deadlines. Like one university might say uh, apply before November 14th or January 15th. But some, um, you may you may be able to uh, apply uh, on a, uh, you know, uh, yearly basis. Like it's, it's called rolling admissions. They can accept you uh, 
into the spring semester or fall semester or summer semester. And in a DPT program, you never get take a break. You know, I never had any um, breaks more than a week. You know, it was like very fast paced, like accelerated program. They were they never let you rest. It was hilarious. Um, what are some of the uh, prerequisite courses? Like I said, these are the courses that you need to take before applying to a DPT program. They have to see these, uh, like anatomy and physiology one and two, biology one and two, biology one and two, uh, they're not always required. Uh, they were required in mine. Advanced biology, they are rarely required. But chemistry one and two with labs and physics one and two in labs. If you take chemistry without a lab, they won't accept it. They will not accept chemistry and physics without labs. Psychology, advanced psychology, maybe a bit like developmental psychology or abnormal psychology, which I took both. Uh, they really want you to have statistics. Um, they, they want you to have English uh, composition classes. Um, and like I said, course prerequisites for admission may vary significantly across DPT program. But these are the courses in a nutshell that uh, you will typically see that is required by those universities. Uh, <clears throat> like I said, uh, there is not a four year degree in physical therapy in America. So what do they get into those um, DPT programs? What kind of degrees do they get into those yet? Uh, number one, exercise science, which I majored in then biology, kinesiology, um, some sort of health science uh, major, psychology, pre-physical therapy. Pre-physical therapy is not a major. It's not a degree. Um, what they do is they enroll you in it, um, but they don't give you a physical therapy degree. You still do either biology, exercise, science, kinesiology. Athletic training um, is a really, really cool uh, degree. Uh, they usually work with athletes, uh, as you can see from the name, but we don't have an athletic training degree in, in Turkey, so you might not be familiar. And they do some uh, rehabilitation, some. Uh, they, they can use electrophysical agents. Uh, They're allowed to use them, but nothing more than that. So, and exercise physiology, but ex exercise science and physiology are, are pretty much the same things uh, as far as the curriculum goes. Uh, what are GPA requirements? Great point average. Usually they require you to have more than um, 3.0 GPA out of four. But if you wanna be competitive, uh, if you really wanna get in, you need to have well over 3.5 and above. So um, they usually, what they will do is they usually say, you need to have an overall, overall GPA of 3.0, but an overall prerequisite a GPA 3.2. So if your prerequisite course's GPA is below 3.2, you can't even apply. Some universities do that. So they wanna get the, those high quality students uh, enrolled. They usually admit like five to 10% of all the applicants. So it's really competitive. <clears throat> like I said, per T observation requirements, they vary from zero to 200, but uh, they usually require it. Uh, more than one setting may be required. Maybe they'll ask you to go to an outpatient orthopedics clinic, then uh, maybe an acute care physical therapy clinic in a hospital, uh, and they must be verified by a licensed physical therapist. Uh, they are, they're the ones that keep track of your hours and they sign the papers. <clears throat> so this is actually a very good uh, requirement in my opinion. So like I said, uh, you're gonna see if it's a good fit for you uh, before applying. Like I said, GRE is similar to LS uh, and score requirements uh, may vary across programs. Some uh, may not even require GRE. It's not always required. <clears throat> Reference letters, uh, like I said, they require you to uh, get one from a physical therapist and one from a professor and one from your other employers or your friends or what uh, not. Uh, this, this also varies uh, by institution. Usually two to three references, but I've seen mostly three references. 
other factors, some do interviews, face-to-face uh, -face interviews, uh, some uh, state residencies, they, I, I rarely seen this. Extracurricular activities like have you participated in some uh, competitions, uh, sports activities and whatnot? Are you an athlete? That'll actually put you above the list. They really value those experiences. Um, a previous work experience, maybe you work as an athletic trainer at a sports club or an exercise scientist. Uh, are you a registered exercise physiologist by the ACSM? Um, so these are um, very valuable experiences and they want diversity. Like uh, they wanna, they don't wanna admit all guys or men or uh, all Americans or Canadians. Uh, they wanna mix it up a little bit. Black, white, it doesn't matter what, you know, uh, but um, they wanna have a diverse because they showcase this uh, on their websites. They, uh, if you go on their websites, They'll say, we have a diverse set of students. Uh, and they'll put a picture of a black guy or in a white girl and, and someone from the Middle East. So they really um, value this the diversity concept. <clears throat> That's the fun part, working as a physical therapist. I really like this. Uh, professional autonomy. Um, do you guys know what autonomy is? You know, it's pretty much uh, being independent, being free as to what you are allowed to do. Like um, PTs in America, they have autonomy, professional autonomy. Uh, they can, they have direct access. You know, that's the first thing when, it, uh, when you talk about autonomy, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. They have direct access, which means they have a right to, a patient has a right to see a physical therapist without an MD referral, without an MD prescription. They don't have to go to see a doctor to see a physical therapist. And this varies, changes from state to state, but all 50 states in America have direct access, some sort of direct access. And how did they get it? They have a board exam. They have a DPT, doctoral degree. Um, they fought very long years for it, and they now have it. And this is, which is what we have to do here in Turkey. Uh, they can work with all the physicians from all the specialties, which was a blessing, uh, if you ask. Uh, you can have um, a dentist send you a TMJ uh, disorder. You know, they write a prescription, they send it to you. And it's better to get a prescription from a, from a doctor because it protects you. Uh, you can still see uh, all the patients, like I said, without a, a prescription, but it's good to see a, a prescription uh, that comes with the patient, but you can work with all the physicians. You know, it's amazing. Uh, and you can make deals with the insurance companies, private, government, it doesn't matter. You can open up your own business, uh, physical therapy business. I have a friend that just opened one in Canada and the other one opened one in Buffalo, New York. Uh, and they're doing okay, they're doing good, uh, even in, uh, in the pandemic. Uh, so they can make, the insurance pays for the treatments uh, to physical therapists. They're, they don't have to have a um, doctor present or an MD present uh, in the facilities. All you need is a physical therapist. <clears throat> what are some of the areas that you can work uh, in PT? Uh, acute care, subacute care, medical rehab units, long-term care, skilled nursing facilities, outpatient clinics. And I'm going to talk a little bit about traveling PT, which is really, really interesting. Uh, let's talk about acute care physical therapy. This is what I did when after my graduation. I was an acute care physical therapist at the organ transplant and surgical ICU units. Uh, our goal was to promote um, early mobilization in patients. So, uh, what are some of those conditions like myocardial infractions, stroke, fracture, surgery, whatever comes to your mind. You go to the hospital today and you see those patients um, that are in the hospital, laying in bed, doing nothing, um, but they should do something. In the orthopedic department at the hospital, at the University of Rochester Hospital, every single orthopedic patient had a physical therapy prescription. So it was a really, really busy uh, service. So we often went to help our, our fellow PT friends uh, there uh, with all the PT evaluations, with the treatments and whatnot. Uh, 
So everyone, pretty much everyone got uh, PT, received PT. Our goal uh, as a PT in acute care setting is to discharge our patients home as soon as possible. Uh, that has a reason. Uh, the reason is the insurance companies don't want to pay uh, a lot of money for those patients. So they actually push us. They call in physical therapists. You know, we try to sign them home. What do you do? You got to get, uh, you get their uh, past medical history, home uh, situation. Do they have uh, a caregiver at home? Uh, is the caregiver able to uh, provide care for 24 hours or eight hours a day? Do they need a rolling walker? Uh, do they need be a cane? Are they able to, do they have stairs at home? If they have stairs at home, you need to have those stairs uh, set up uh, at the hospital. You need to have them, uh, you need to make them climb those stairs before discharging them. What happens if you can't discharge them? If the prognosis is bad, poor, or fair, you send them to a subacute care facility. Subacute care comes after the acute care, you know the, the meaning. Uh, if the patient did not reach his or her goals in acute care, these are the patients, like I said, fair with fair to poor prognosis. Um, they have a tendency to not get better. They are either too old or their conditions uh, is severe or they have comorbidities, um, things like that. So what happens if they don't get better in a subacute care setting? Um, they usually go to a skilled nursing facility, long-term care. These are Huzurevi um, uh, in Turkey. Huzurevi. <laughs> uh, this is the best word, so I had to speak Turkish. Um, these are, uh, this setting is actually quite boring. I worked in this setting uh, as a part-time when I was working in the hospital. And there is not much you can do. You know, you can't uh, do these high-tech exercises, therapeutic exercises. What you do is knee extensions, uh, knee abductions, knee adductions, and, you know, it's, it's quite uh, boring. But they pay better. You make more money working in a skilled nursing facility because it's boring, you know. You know, ups and downs, you know, one side, it's, it's getting boring, but you, you get paid more, so you kind of stick to it. Uh, if you need cash. Uh, I kind of skipped this, but I wanted to get back to this. Medical rehab units. Let's say you have a, a patient who's really young, great prognosis, great potential to improve, but has some sort of a severe condition. Uh, you send them to a medical rehab unit because they, have a, they offer a higher level of rehabilitation than short-term facilities. They have better equipment, um, more therapists. They don't only have physical therapists, but they also have occupational therapists, speech therapists, and they get at least three hours of rehab a day. So these are really specialized rehabilitation units for those patients. On average, the length of stay is um, 14 days, but they might lengthen that depending on the uh, patient needs. Outpatient PT clinic are the clinics that you see in Turkey in hospitals. You know, Ayaktan Tedavi, it's called. <clears throat> Outpatient, that's what it's called. These are the typical uh, PT clinics. Uh, they're similar to the ones in Turkey, uh, same equipment um, and whatnot. The, the difference is in America, um, when a patient comes to a PT clinic, first time, the first session, is not a treatment session. The first session is an evaluation session. So you evaluate the patient uh, for, it ranges from 30 to 40 minutes, 60 minutes, usually 60 minutes because you, uh, you evaluate them from top to bottom, like everything. You, you do muscle manual, muscle testing, you do neurological testing, uh, you do palpations, you know, whatever you can think of, you do everything on them. And then you make a PT diagnosis. You don't make it, medical diagnosis, you make a PT diagnosis. If the patient might have a Parkinson's disease and your PT diagnosis would be like gait abnormality or impaired functional mobility, 
you can still make a diagnosis, but a PT diagnosis. <clears throat> the other thing that is different uh, from Turkey is that usually uh, patients see a physical therapist two to three times or three to four times a week, not every day, not five times a day, or five times a week. Um, and they still get better, you know. Uh, that's the other difference. Uh, this traveling PT, uh, I don't know, uh, Hojam, have you ever uh, heard of traveling PT? Oh, I haven't. You haven't? No. You might consider going uh, going to America after this. So <laughs> get yourself ready. <laughs> they make a lot of money. How does this work? First, <clears throat> You need to graduate, of course. You need a license to practice. You need to pass the board exam. Then, um, usually, I don't know if you can see my cursor, hold on. Uh, usually, these states, uh, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, these are the states that they require a lot of physical therapists. And in rural, rural areas, in areas with less population, they have a hard time getting physical therapists to work there. So what they do is they offer a lot of money. They offer a lot of money. They offer free housing, no rent payments, nothing, no electric bills, no uh, you know natural gas bills, no telephone bills. And you sign a 13 week contract with that facility uh, get paid a lot, tax-free, no taxes. Uh, and then after 13 weeks, you either stay and you keep working. And if you stay, they give you a sign on bonus, like $5,000, $10,000, $2,000, depending on the facility. Uh, but if you don't, let's say after at the end of the 13 weeks, you don't want to work there, you sign another contract. Let's say you were in Texas. You want to go to Arizona and travel the, uh, the, the country. You go to Arizona, uh, sign another 13-week contract with another facility with the same amount of pay. No, uh, you know, you don't pay rent. And all the housing uh, are furnished with the, with the furniture in it. TV, internet, telephone, uh, you know, washer machine, dishwasher, uh, things like that. So what this does is uh, it gives you an opportunity to take a break in between, uh, you know, spend the money that you saved up, uh, go somewhere else, and then start working again. So they earn at least uh, even more now, I think, maybe $6,500 a month. No expenses, no other expenses, nets uh, in your bank account. So they uh, goes up to like uh, $100,000 a year, I think they make. This is a really good, uh, if I stayed in America, I would do this. Uh, it's really good for the single people though. Uh, what are some of the specialties uh, in America? There are 10 specialties. <clears throat> Cardiovascular and pulmonary specialty, clinical electrophysiology, which they do like EMGs and stuff, uh, electrophysical agents, geriatrics, neurology, oncology, orthopedics, pediatrics, sports, living health, and wound management. In America, um, PTs do wound management. They care of wounds. Like um, here, they don't. They don't even touch it. But we are the um, profession to go to uh, when it comes to wound management, which is really cool. So how do you become a specialist? Uh, you must practice for at least 2,000 hours in your area of spe specialization. So if you want to be an orthopedic specialist, you need to have, you need to have worked uh, at least 2,000 hours to apply to take the exam. Then you have to take the exam and certify it. And every two to three years, this, um, <clears throat> this is renewed. So what you do is you uh, keep working in the same field, it's, it renews automatically. But if you don't, you have to uh, take the exam again and pass it. <clears throat> so 
uh, this there is a lot of things to talk about, but this is uh, PT in America in a nutshell. So if you have any questions uh, that you have for me, um, I'll take them now. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, I couldn't uh, uh, introduce myself due to the uh, confusion. Uh, I'm Tyrin Tyrin and I'm a member of the board of uh, directors Physiotherapy and Rehabilitation Club of Istanbul University. Uh, I'm the moderator of our uh, today's activity. Uh, if you wish, I will continue with uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what did you mean by gaining experience uh, one to three years prior to applying for DPT? Can we gain experience while we study our bachelors? So what I mean is, um, in America, I didn't talk about this, but there's also um, a profession called rehabilitation aid, yeah, the PT aid. Um, PT aid is someone, even within high school degree, you can do that. What a PT aid does, aid does, is that bring me the hot pack, bring me the cold pack, and clean this, clean that. You still, uh, you are still in that rehabilitation setting. You see what the physical therapists are doing, and you are also contributing um, to the profession. So this is um, a relevant experience in their eyes. Or, like I said. Uh, you might have an exercise science degree. You might have worked in cardiovascular rehabilitation setting, which the exercise science degree graduates do work in. Um, that's also a relevant experience. You might work at a sports club. That's also a relevant experience. So uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, have an experience as a PT, but something related to PT is also enough. Okay, another question about the GPA. Uh, do they take the GPA will, with uh, all subjects we take in the years or uh, they make GPA on subjects that uh, they want only? Uh, like we have some subjects that are not included in physiotherapy. I see, like Atatürk, Inkilapları, yeah. Turkish language and things like that. So first, they'll, um, like I said, they'll calculate they'll take into account two types of GPA. First, your overall GPA, which they will consider those two still. And they'll also consider your prerequisite GPA, like your anatomy, physiology, um, biomechanics classes. So two types. Yes, they will consider those two. <clears throat> uh, how is monad therapy in the USA? If I wanna work there, I mean orthopedics. Uh, when you say manual therapy, in Turkey, when they say manual therapy, they always talk about spinal manipulation. In America, manual therapy is not only about spinal manipulation. It's almost, it's like only 5% of manual therapy. When they say <laughs> manual therapy, there's mulligan. Uh, even when you stretch a muscle, that's manual therapy. But th this concept has gone really done. I don't know if you, if you would agree, uh, Hojam, uh, with me, but uh, I really oppose uh, using spinal manipulation and manual therapy in the same, you know, like, you know, they're not the same, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, manual therapy in America, I rarely saw um, PTs doing spinal manipulation. And some states, some states forbid uh, PTs uh, doing spinal manipulation, some states. Um, Usually they do uh, mobilization, <clears throat> not manipulation. Uh, yeah, they do manual therapy, but usually many uh, mobilizations, not manipulation. But you can still do. You can still do it depending on the uh, the state that you go. So when you go to a state in America, you have to uh, check out their scope of practice. They are all different. Not like in Turkey. You go to Izmir, it's the same thing. You go to Istanbul, it's the same. Not in America. Uh, every state has different rules when it comes to physical therapy practice. Uh, what suggests do you for us to be traveling physiotherapists? What suggestions do I have uh, to travel? First of all, um, uh, get licensed in America. So how do you do that? You need to have a master's degree. Uh, 
in physiotherapy or some other uh, or in anatomy, it doesn't matter. You need to have a master's degree uh, to work in America now. So it changed apparently, and they might uh, make the rules a little harder in the future. So uh, first you need to have a master's degree, then you need to apply uh, to the agencies, the equivalency agencies, like the Dinklick agencies in America, uh, get yourself, um, get that uh, equivalency. Then you need to uh, pass the licensure exam. Then you can apply to any traveling PT job. And if you do those, it's almost guaranteed that you'll get a job. You know, you will have no problems finding a job uh, in America. Thank you. Uh, I will graduate from Turkey. Can I get special to like in Man's Health in USA? Uh, you have to document this, but I don't, they might not uh, accept uh, the experience that you have in Turkey. They might, um, I never thought about that before, but um, you will still have to take the exam. I know I'll look into it. I don't know exactly, but I'll look into it. Uh, should our experience in PT, even as a PT aid be registered somewhere? Let me read that again. Should our experience in PT, even as a PT aid be registered? Uh, the PTA be registered somewhere. Can you reword that? I don't know if you... Uh, yes, doctor, uh, I will explain my question. Uh, yeah. As I uh, said, as you explained that we have to have uh, at least one to three years uh, experience in order to apply for DPT. I mean, um, you explained that uh, we can, uh, we can uh, I mean, have experience in as a deep, as a physiotherapist aid. So should, should it be registered in some place? I mean, uh, or should we go to a clinic and just work there or something like this? No, I don't think uh, it's said, maybe you misunderstood, not one to three years. Um, let me see what I wrote. Um, begin search for PT experiences one to three years before you apply. So you don't need to have a one to three years of experience. Begin your search one to three mm. years before you apply. So you don't really have to have the, that much of experience. Even maybe two months of experience would be enough. You know, that's more than enough, two months, Thank one you. month. Uh, I have a question, but in, it's not in the chat. Uh, mm. You have many ex experiences both in USA and Turkey. Uh, you worked and studied in USA and you work in Turkey. Uh, you didn't study it in Turkey, but you know, being a student in Turkey, because uh, now you're educating in Atlanta Medellin University. So I have two questions. Uh, first one is, uh, what is the difference between uh, being a physiotherapist in Turkey and USA? Uh, second one is, what is the difference between uh, being a physiotherapist student in USA and Turkey? The difference between, uh, thank you for the question, by the way, Perry. Uh, yeah. The difference is like uh, in Turkey, you don't spend a lot of time evaluating the patient because the PMNR doctor does that, the FETR doctor does all the evaluation, which we uh, we did all the evaluations in America. So that's that was the biggest difference. That's the thing that I couldn't get used to when I first came here. I felt like it was the power was taken from me. Like that power of my profession was taken from me. So uh, that was the main difference. Um, and autonomy, prof professional autonomy, we don't have here. Um, uh, it looks like the, the Turkish uh, Physiotherapy Associates, Association is trying to change that. Like uh, Dr. Uh, Serapina said, uh, you know, the Turkish Higher Education Council is not allowing us to have a board exam, which I don't understand at all because that's only going to improve the quality of care uh, in Turkey. You know, we're gonna improve our quality of care that we give to patients, which I don't understand the connection between the two, uh, why they're refusing us to have a board exam. Uh, and we, we should be able to, we should have a board exam for nurses too, nurses. You know, 
they should get in. You know, in America, they are registered. They have to pass an exam. Registered nurses. We are licensed physical therapists. Uh, registered mm -hmm. respiratory therapists. Even an associate's degree have a board exam in America. Two-year degree has a board exam. I don't understand why we don't have. So professional autonomy is the other thing. Uh, we can't work with all the physicians in, Tur in Turkey, you know. Uh, so these are the main things. And, and the documentation that we do in Turkey uh, is not enough, you know. Uh, like we do a test, we have to have a pretest and a post-test, which we rarely do in Turkey. So what I want you, you guys to do when you graduate after you gra your graduation, um, have some objective measures, like you know, measure the patients objectively. Like if you do a timed up and go test, uh, you do that, you do that pre-test and then the post-test and then show it to the patient that, that the, he improved. And uh, you can have a psychological impact on the patient um, and you wouldn't even know it, you know, he would get better. You know, the placebo effect, Sometimes the, the patients, they go like, you know, the, the, the gel that you put on me, it, was, it felt really good. It's the ultrasound gel, you know, and you, you pour that. I do that. I use the placebo effect all the time, as long as it's, it helps the patient. So that, those are the main differences. As far as the students go, I think, uh, like I said, the main difference is the field work experiences. I had 34 weeks of internship experience, like full-time, five days a week. Um, at the end of the, my internships, I took on uh, the load, the caseload of a typical physical therapist. And I got a job offer at the end of the, uh, and they, they always get a job offer. So if they like you, they offer you a job. So uh, otherwise I think the, I'm teaching at college, but my, my students are not there yet. We're opening next year. So I, I'm still, I still have um, a lot to learn when it comes to PT education in Turkey. So I'm still up and coming. So, uh, but from where I stand right now, so it's, um, uh, we need more clinical experiences in Turkey. And we need a five-year degree. Uh, thank you for your answering. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Uh, for the paper to go to the USA as a student from Middle East, our acceptance chances will be reduced. No, I think, like I talked about diversity, cultural diversity. Uh, cultural diversity is really important um, in American universities. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're from. I've seen a lot of Middle Eastern students uh, in my in my class, um, I had uh, and Pakistani students. I had um, a Serbian. I had like I was Turkish. They accepted me, uh, and uh, I had an Egyptian student in my class. Lots of Indians. Lots of Indians. Um, so it doesn't matter where you're from. Uh, and actually, being a Middle Eastern increases your chances of accept of, of getting accepted believe me okay yeah, thank you uh, let's say i graduated in uh, the dpc program uh, and i came back to turkey uh, what is my status uh, that's a really good question so you asked uh, i got my dbt and it came back to turkey mm -hmm. yeah let me explain. I, I, <laughs> I'm probably the first one who got um, a denklik in Turkey. So here's what I experienced. Uh, I came to Turkey with a DBT uh, degree. I went to Yerk. Yerk. Uh, they had no idea what a DPT was. So I got my um, exercise science degree as it is. There was no problem with that. But when it comes to DPT, uh, I told them that I wanted to work as a physical therapist in Turkey. They told me that since I didn't have a four-year degree in physiotherapy, that I wouldn't be able to uh, work as a physical therapist in Turkey. So after like 10 months, they had a counselor. Uh, 
uh, from Hacettepe University. Um, I actually went to see uh, Dr. Deniz Inal uh, Hocam. Uh, she helped me out a little bit too, uh, sağ olsun. Uh, Yıldırım Beyazıt University, Gazi University, and they uh, decided on an exam. The first exam I had to pass was the general um, medical exam, like anatomy, physiology, all those types of questions. I passed that. Then the second exam was about physical therapy, like electrophysical agents, therapeutic exercise, neurologic diseases, orthopedic diseases. I had to pass that too. So I passed those two. And they gave me a Bachelor of Science uh, equivalency, Denklik, in physiotherapy. So what happened after that? <laughs> uh, I didn't get my doctoral degree evaluated uh, by UAK. Uh, I worked uh, several years in Turkey. Then I decided to work at the university. Since I had a doctoral thesis, uh, I was able to get uh, my doctoral equivalency papers uh, from Yerk. But if I don't, if I didn't have a thesis, they wouldn't give it to me. I'm pretty sure because um, doctoral thesis is really important and it's a requirement by you. In some DPT programs, uh, they don't require require you to have uh, to go through a thesis. You know, you can graduate without a thesis because it's a clinical doctorate. So you might not have uh, a doctoral degree in Turkey if you don't go to a program without a thesis, with a thesis. Uh, thank you. Uh, what is it that you wish you knew uh, or did, did in your bachelor's that you could suggest for us uh, as bachelor's students studying in Turkey? Um, if the schools uh, don't require you to um, like do certain things like clinical experiences, um, Go try to observe. Like it's it's really hard in this pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic right now. But um, you go out of your way to gain those experiences. Like go observe some physical therapists, some physiotherapists uh, in Turkey. Ask them. Uh, ask them questions. Yeah, you never stop asking questions uh, because your uh, professors they'll uh, they'll gra gladly answer. Uh, read a lot of articles, scientific articles you'll know their value in the future. Um, right now, if I uh, research, before, when I research a certain topic, I always Google it. But now I go to um, scientific papers, scientific journals. Um, I'm not taking anything for granted. Um, you can start writing articles now, like, uh, like review articles. Uh, read a lot of articles, their methodology. Usually no one reads the articles methodology, but I, I always do because I try to learn from something from them. So uh, these are some of the things that I would uh, recommend you guys uh, while studying uh, your physiotherapy degree. Thank you. Uh, does it matter which university we do a PhD or DPT? It doesn't matter. Uh, go for the cheapest option, cheapest, because they're all the same, pretty much they're all the same, just small differences. And actually there is one thing that you might consider. Um, check out their um, staff, like professors. Are they specialized in certain areas like neurological uh, special? Do they have a neurological specialty professor? orthopedic specialty professor, women's health, um, geriatric care. Um, that's one of the things that I would look at uh, while searching for a PhD or a DPT program in America. So those specialties are really important. Uh, when you graduated physiotherapy program in Turkey, can you work uh, in the USA? What are the conditions? Uh, you cannot work with a Bachelor of Science degree you need to have a master's degree uh, first. And that master's degree could be in anything. Um, it could be in, I don't know, like anatomy, physiology, um, exercise science, it doesn't matter, but you need to have a master's degree of some sort to be able to work 
uh, to, to be able to apply to the uh, board exam and get licensed. Thank you. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages to being physiotherapist in USA? The biggest advantage, I, I've talked about this, like professional autonomy and uh, to be more free. Uh, you know, you can have your own diagnosis, you can treat your own patients, you don't rely on medical doctors uh, for any treatments or whatnot. Uh, so professional autonomy is the biggest advantage. Uh, you know, the professional autonomy brings the other advantages like uh, direct access, able to see for abil ability to work with all the physicians uh, in America. Thank you. Uh, last say I graduated physical therapy program in Turkey and I want to do DPT. Uh, is it possible? What should I do for that? Could you repeat that again? Uh, if we graduated physical therapy in Turkey uh, and, and I want to do uh, DPT, is it possible? And uh, what should I do for that? Like I said, um, it's possible, but you still need to do a master's degree. That's the biggest thing. Uh, they won't even consider you. Um, but there is one thing. There is um, someone uh, with a bachelor's degree in America right now uh, majoring in exercise science. I think he graduated from Bakhtisha University. Uh, apparently, with a uh, Bachelor of Science degree, you can work as a PTA, um, physical therapist assistant. What a physical therapist assistant does is they do they can do all the treatments, but they cannot do evaluations and they cannot change uh, the physical therapist's exercise program. So they can pretty much do everything, but they cannot do evaluations, the first patient evaluation, and they cannot change uh, any of the patient's uh, treatment plan. That's what he told me uh, quite recently. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much for answering. If there is nothing you want to add, uh, I will finish the event. Let, let me ask a question. Okay. Did you mean full dan? Full, full dan? Did you mean full no. dan? Who, right? No. Okay, this is no, full dan already got into a PhD program, which I'm really happy about. Yes. She's really excited for and it. Maybe you can you can give her as, a, as an example because you already know the steps. Yes. Um, uh, actually, full dan we're talking about, she's a physi physiotherapist and she's a, I think she's a student of yours, right, uh, Hojan? Yeah, she's a student of yours, and um, she she's in America right now. She has a master's degree, uh, and she just got in. She just got accepted to Loma Linda University uh, into the PhD program. And let me give you, like, thank you for opening this up, because there are some PhD programs in America. They pay for everything, and they give you a stipend. Stipend is a salary. Like you'll make, like you're not gonna pay anything for the PhD school. And they give you like $1,500 every month. Okay. It's really good. Like it's like you do your masters, you do your, my, my recommendation would be do your masters in Turkey and find a, a university, usually a big research university, like university at Buffalo, for example, the university that I graduated from, they offer these for you. So mm -hmm. apply the, to their PhD programs and they'll pay for everything. You, you won't have to pay a single lira or dollar <laughs> uh, or euro. Uh, and they pay you for, uh, it's, a, it's a teaching assistant position. So really consider that. I'll help you out with that too. Uh, so if you have any questions after the pres presentation, uh, you can reach me through, I can uh, drop my email here. Um, I can uh, direct you in the, uh, I can guide you in the uh, right direction. So you won't make any mistakes and you will make the right choice because those PhD programs are really expensive. Uh, you know, the value of Turkish Dura against uh, the US dollar. So you need to find those programs and you need to have them pay for your education, not you. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, 
Uh, thanks again to Assistant Professor Physiotherapist Dinsagri. Our event has ended here. Thank you uh, so much for your participating and see you at our other events. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. For such a kind of organization. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bizim e, İngilizce bölümünün İstinye Üniversitesi'nin e, sanıyorum Türkiye'de tek Bristol Salem Üniversitesi ile bir anlaşması var. E, bizden mezun olan öğrenciyi direkt bir, bir şey yüksekse iki buçuk üstü galiba hmm. e, direkt alıyor. Entry level DPT'ye alıyor. Entry hmm. level. Evet. Yani o bir yerde yüksek lisansı eşdeğer oluyor oradan Hı. bitirince değil mi? Yüksek lisansı almış oluyor. Hocam aslında şöyle, evet. şimdi bu çok Amerika'da bile karışık bir mevzu. Şimdi baktığınız aslında doktora. Benim orada e, ünvarım da doktor. E, her ne kadar tabii PhD yapmasak da arada bir yüksek lisans olmasa da yüksek lisansa da eşdeğer sayılmıyor. Sadece şöyle diyorlar. Mesela PhD'ye araştırma doktorası, DPT'ye klinik doktorası diyorlar. Öyle ayrıştırma yapıyor APTA. Ee, ben buraya geldim. Ee, tezim olduğu için dedim ya tez, tezli DPT yaptığım için ki iyi ki de yapmışım. E, şansa oldu o da. E, bana denklik verdiler ama ben de denk, şey tez olmasaydı kesinlikle vermezlerdi. Yani burada hiçbir anlamı kalmayacaktı. Amerika'da kalsaydım o zaman sıkıntı değil ama tezli olduğu için ben birazcık da şey e, genelde öngörüşlüyüm de orada öngörüşlü olamadım. Orada birazcık o, kucağıma düşmüş oldu o tez. İyi ki de olmuş. <gülüyor> Çok güzel oldu. ama burada denkliği verdi UYK. Araştırdılar. E, bir 5-6 aylık süreç oldu. E, 31 Ocak'ta başvuru yaptım. E, 5 Temmuz'da mıydı yanılmıyorsam denkliğimi aldım e, tezli olduğu için. Ya sonuçta doktoraya eş değer e, saydılar. Amerika'da da doktora ünvanı var. E, yani birazcık şey yani arasında kalıyor gibi. Sanki PhD ile e, yüksek lisans arasında kalan bir evet. şey gibi. <gülüyor> Derece gibi. Evet. evet. E, şeyde Burada da mesela hekimler de e, 6 yıl okuyup hekim mezun olduğu zaman yani pratisyen hekim olarak mezun oluyor. Ama e, üniversitede yardımcı doçent oluyorlardı. Şimdi doktor öğretim üyesi kadrosuyla çalışabiliyorlar. Evet ee, hocam. Aynen. Işte Ona benzer bir şekilde. 7 evet. yıl okumuş oluyorsunuz. 7 yılla çünkü önce 5 yılda biliyorsunuz DPT Hı. giderek bunu işte 2010 bir milattı. Biz de o zamanlar kendimizi ona göre 2010'u bulamayız ama belki daha sonrasında biz de bir beş yıla çıkarız diye ümit ediyorduk ki eczacılık çıktı beş yıla. Evet. Bu beş yıla çıkartma şeyleri var. Belki çıktı bile. Ama galiba hukuk da beş yıla çıktı. Biz de istedik. Fakat YÖK e, izin vermedi ama YÖK'ün izin vermemesinin esas nedeni Sağlık Bakanlığı ve Sağlık Bakanlığı'nda karar merciinde olanların izin vermemesi. Yani politik e, bir de size verirsek ne olacak sonra demişler. Yani, yani kaliteden aslında... korkuyoruz anlaşılan hocam. E, evet tabi tabi yani <gülüyor> öyle tabi öyle. Çok Ama su akıyor yani bir yerde geri gitmeyecek. Daha önceden pek çok hakkımız yoktu. Şu anda var. Onlar da biliyorlar. Belki biraz daha çalışmamız lazım. Sizlerin hocam bence de... alacağız. <gülüyor> Bence bütün haklarımızı alacağız. Yavaş yavaş olacak ama alacağız. Yani bu böyle gitmeyecek. E, bu böyle giderse isyan çıkacak çünkü. E, ve bu kaliteyi arttırmamız artık. Yani bu ben, ben ilk önce benim planım aslında bana sorarsınız. Önce bir board e, sınavı gelmesi lazım. Evet. E, önce o gelsin ki ben hep diyorum. Şimdi Amerikalılar ne yaptı? Hani 5 yıl diyordunuz ya. Sonra ne yaptı? 7 yıla çıkardılar. Hı-hı. Diyorlar ki ya onların planı şu. DPT'ye geçmelerinin nedeni e, sigorta şirketlerinden daha fazla ödenek alabilmek. 
Onlar önce elini güçlendiriyor sonra diyor ki bakın bende GPT var. 7 yıl okutuyorum ben fizyoterapistlerimi. 7 yıl okumak zorundalar. Bize 50 dolar değil 70 dolar verin artık. Sonra gittiler direkt eksis aldılar. E, borç sınavları var. İşte onu da bakın benim şey hepsi license diyorlar. Hepsi sınavı geçtiler. 3 yılda bir de makalelerini okuyorlar. Kongrelere katılıyorlar. Bütün fizyoterapiste katılmak zorunda. Sonra tekrar aynı sınavı geç almak zorunda kalmamak için. Yani onların yaptığı bu. Ee, bizim de böyle yapmamız lazım. İşte elimizi de bağlayan dediğiniz gibi politik durumlar. Politik, şu anda tamam. Ben e, İlay da buradaydı. E, yok mu şu anda? Göremiyorum. E, kongreden kim var? Buradayım hocam. İlay da kongreyle ilgili Dinçer Bey'e bilgi verebilir misin? Sen en yakın biliyorsun. Hocam 8 var. Hocam 8-9 Mayıs'ta olacak. İsterseniz ben detaylı bilgiyi WhatsApp üzerinden Dinçer Bey'e ileteyim. Hı. İyi olur. Bir de derneğe üye misiniz? Hocam <gülüyor> olacağım. <gülüyor> olacağım. <gülüyor> hatta hatta şöyle e, bu, çok safsakladım hocam onu da. E, bizim benim çalıştığım arkadaşım da Aydın İl temsilcisi. Bir öğretim görevlisi arkadaşım var. Onunla daha geçen gün konuştum. Ya dedim işte bu zamana kadar şey yapmadım düşünmedim ama Artık e, yapacağım. Hatta e, bu konuda şey bile yani sosyal medya üzerinden e, diğer öğrencileri işte teşvik edici paylaşımlar yapmak istiyorum. Çünkü önemli. Yani şu zamana kadar yaptığım hatayı düşmemek istiyorum. E, çünkü e, derneği güçlendirirsek bizim haklarımızı daha da e, şey yaparlar. Bir de bence siz üye olun. Sizsin, siz dernekte aktif üye olarak da çok e, çalışırsanız ve çok yol, yol, yol gösterici olursunuz bu altyapınızla. Sevinirim Ort hocam. sınavı için e, bir ekip var bu konuda çalışan hocalarımız var. Yani şeye girerseniz, derneğe üye olursanız oradan e, şey e, çalışırsanız. Bir Zakeri diye bir Amerikalı gene DPT vardı. Şey tanıştım dedi, onunla. Tanıştım, tanıştım hocam. Tabii o zaman <gülüyor> Deniz Hoca ile tanıştığımda 2013'te hatta beni yemeğe çıkardı. Evet. Belki şu anda Amerika'da. Evet, ee, tabii o, Türkçeyi de biliyordu falan. Çok, <gülüyor> çok iyi. O Türk gibi olmuştu zaten. Samur Mahir'di değil mi söyledi? Samur Mahir. Zerk Samur, Samur Mahir. Mahir. Evet. Zakeri evet. Samur Mahir. Tabii evet. tanıştık hocam ya. <gülüyor> Deniz Hoca vermişti. Geriyatçı vermiş, çalışıyordu. O geriyatçıydı galiba. Alanı. Bilmiyorum. Galiba. Öyle galiba, galiba hocam. Yani o da çok şey yaptı bu borç sınavı için çok e, konuşmuştu toplantılarda çok fikir yürütmüştü çok güzel olur e, genel bir konusu hakkında bir bilgi verir misin? E, borç sınavı hocam e, pardon par, pardon hı. yok öz, size demedim pardon hı. sizin Verir misin demem size pardon. <gülüyor> Hocam olur mu? Şey için, e, İlayda için demiştim ama siz buyurun anlatın sonra İlayda biraz kongreyle ilgili bilgi versin bize. Ha, ben sınavla ilgili mi anlatayım hocam? Buyurun buyurun tabii çok güzel olur. Hocam A'dan Z'ye her şey soruyorlar bu kadar. A'dan evet. Z'ye her şey inanılır gibi değil yani her şey kitabın köşesinden de soruyorlar. Her evet. şey soruyorlar. Ben yurt dışına Arabistan'da çalışmaya gittiğim zaman bir anda Hacettepe'den İngilizcenin içine düştüm ve soru hazırlamak bayağı bir zaman alıyordu. Yani Türkçe soruya hazır alışırken birden borç sınavının şeyi vardı kütüphanede, kitapçığı vardı. Ondan çalışmıştım ve şu anki sorularımın da biraz temelinde o ona alışıyor tabii insan da o, o orada biraz kopya çekmiştim ilk başlarda sonra tabii kendi insan anlattığını ama dediğiniz doğru çok kapsamlı çok kapsamlı ciddi evet. kapsamlı ve evet. ama önemli yani çalışan çok önemli çalışan bir de yani 75 yani 75 alınmayacak bir skor değil alıyorlar yani biz aldık alıyor ee, ya Mezun olanlar da gittikleri zaman alıyorlar. Yani Bence alırlar. Yani buradaki arkadaşlarımız da kendilerini küçümsemesinler, küçük görmesinler. Yani e, sıkıntı sizde değil zaten, sistemde. Sistem yani, tamamen sistemsel bir sıkıntı. Yoksa sizin bilginin... Şimdi Serap Hoca'dan alacağınız eğitimi ben e, şey yapamıyorum. Hani böyle şey gibi geliyor. Hani e, Çünkü e, bu noktalara gelmek hiç kolay değil. Profesör olmak. E, Türkiye'de bu alanda bilinmek, tanınmak evet, filan. Hani... Her şey sırasıyla oluyor. Siz de olacaksınız inşallah. İnşallah. Bizim, bizim öğrencilerimiz de ben diyorum 
esasında e, öğrencilerimiz yani Türkiye'deki fizyoterapide lisans eğitiminde bile yüksek lisans seviyesinde alıyorlar. Çünkü bayağı bir ders alıyorlar. Evet. Şey, dolu, yoğun. Onun için de yurt dışına gittikleri zaman da rahat ediyorlar. Bu bizim kongremiz e, her iki senede bir yapılıyor. E, Ulusal Fizyoterapi Kongresi. İki senede bir de sempozyum yapılıyor. O sempozyum ben e, öğrenciyken başlamıştı. Şimdi artık kaçıncı bilmiyorum. 32. falan böyle bir rakamı var. O zaman bir sömestr, bir yıl e, sempozyum, bir yıl kongre olmuş oluyor. Yani her yıl dernek bir şey yapıyor. Onun toplantısı. <gülüyor> Katılabilirseniz çok e, seviniriz. Katılırım ee, hocam. Neden olmasın? Zaten seviniriz. böyle şeyleri e, çok de, kovalıyorum. Evet. Sizi de hemen dernek üyesi orada <gülüyor> yapalım. Hemen, hemen. Söz veriyorum. <gülüyor> hafta içinde kesinlikle oluyorum. Hemen gönderiyorum. Hemen <gülüyor> İlayda sen bir söyle de nasıl olacağını bir adresin. Evet. Hocam kongrede konu olarak COVID döneminde fizyoterapi ve rehabilitasyon konu, e, konusu işlenecek. Bu şekilde. COVID var. Günümüz pandemisinde fizyoterapi ve rehabilitasyon Fizyoterapi'de olarak. Var. Çok değişik farklı konular var. Yani iki gün, üç gün sürüyor. Kurslar var. Kurslar da var. Ay, kurslar evet. da çok var evet. aslında. Evet. Kurslar, evet. Böyle kongrelerde kurslar çok daha değerli oluyor. Evet. evet. Ben de Amerika'da evet. katıldım hocam şeye bu Combined Sections Meeting Chicago'daki 2012'de e, orada hatta e, bütün o, okuldaki diğer öğrencilerle gittik, profesörlerimizle gittik. E, sonra New York çok bir de şeye gitmiştim ben, delegeler toplantısı, fizyoterapi, Aha. bütün eyalet delegeleri gelmişti orada görev almıştım. İşte New York e, bir şeye, e, New Mexico'ya bir not gönderecek, onu alıyorsun götürüyorsun New Mexico evet, evet. masasına falan çok güzeldi. <gülüyor> Böyle şeylere katılmayı seviyorum ben. İnşallah yüz yüze de olursa daha iyi olur. Tabii artık bu sefer Zoom'dan ama bir cumartesi pazar. Ama hiç olmazsa tanışırsınız. Güzel olur. Kesinlikle doğru söylüyorsunuz. Biz de yollayalım şeyi, yani bilgileri. Hı-hı. Çok teşekkür ederim. Ben göndereceğim hocam. Evet, çok teşekkür iyi. ederim Emine. Teşekkür ben teşekkür ederim. ederim. Ee, tamam. Tekrardan herkese Pervin'e, Zeynep Hanım'a, Pervin Hanım'a işte Hepinize emeği geçen herkese çok teşekkür ederim. Biz teşekkür ederiz. Ee, biz teşekkür ederiz hocam. Yani hocama da. Ederiz Dediğim hocam. gibi e-mailimi yazdım. E, ulaşmak isterseniz her zaman e, cevap veririm. Hani yardımcı olmaya çalışırım. E, doğru yola. Yani doğru ben, yönde en azından. Ben size bir şey söyleyeyim. Bizim şimdi bir postür grubumuz var. Öğrenciler de biraz biliyorlar. Geçen sene de çalışmıştık. E, yurt dışıyla Amerika'da var, ee, şeyden Avrupa'dan da e, arkadaşlar var. Bir postür e, şeyi yapacağız grubuyla e, okullarda postürün düzeltilmesi bir Avrupa Birliği projesi planlayacağız. Yaygın bir şekilde okullarda postürün e, desteklenmesi, düzeltilmesi. Çünkü zaten şu anda iyice Postür gitti çocuklar. İstedim evet. hocam. Şu anda şöyle duruyoruz ya aslında biraz. <gülüyor> e, <postürümüzden gülüyor> Hepsi online. Hani ekrandan uzaklaştıralım derken ekranın içine düştü çocuklar. Maalesef. Hani bunu şimdi böyle hani Covid sonrası için de bir hazırlık olmuş olacak. Siz, size ben de onu yollayayım. Sizi de davet edelim. Siz Doğru de hocam. kurum olarak katılırsınız veya bireysel katılırsınız. Hı-hı. çok da güzel olur olur hocam yardımcı olmaya çalışırım her evet. şekilde Hiç evet. şey, kurum olarak da olabilir bireysel olarak da olabilir olur, yani mutlaka de... yardımcı olabileceğimiz bir konu vardır ee... öğrencilerimizle birlikte çalışırsınız çok da seviniriz onlar da Hı-hı. mutlu olurlar muhakkak ki valla çok iyi olur hocam Belki sonra da alırız sizi İstanbul'a ama gelmiyorsunuz İstanbul'a. Hocam önce bu <gülüyor> müdürümle bir görüşmen istersin <gülüyor> <gülüyor> <gülüyor> o çok uğraştı ee, böyle bir, bir iki yıl falan bekleyelim inşallah kısmetse olur hocam neden olmaz sizlerle çalışmak evet. isterim valla bütün öğrencilerimiz çok seviyorlar İstanbul'u hmm. İstanbul'u valla orada Çorlu'daydım hocam bir ara ee, çok yakındık ama 5 yıl Çorlu'da kaldım ne güzel. İstanbul beni korkutmuştur 
Yani gezmeye gideceğim. Onda haklısınız. En güzeli gezmeye gelmek. Sizin bulunduğunuz yer şimdi bambaşka güzelliklerle. Evet hocam siz Herkes... belki buraya gelirsiniz belli olmaz. Herkes... <gülüyor> siz bizi çağırın. Aydın, Kuşadası. Daha yani buraları. Evet, tabii tabii şeyler <gülüyor> yani tabiatla beraber olmak daha güzel. Evet ben... hocam. Çok teşekkürler. Ben teşekkür ederim hocam. Tekrardan herkese çok teşekkür ederim. Size, hepinize başarılar. Sağ olun. İnşallah teşekkür istediğiniz ederim. gibi olur her şey. Allah yolunuzu açık etsin inşallah. Teşekkürler, teşekkürler hocam. En kısa zamanda iyi haberlerini alırız inşallah. İnşallah, inşallah hocam. Dualarımız olur zaten. Hayırlı akşamlar herkese. Hayırlı i̇yi akşamlar hocam. Herkese. Hayırlı akşamlar hocam. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler. Başarılar. Çok güzel. Teşekkürler. Hocam. Teşekkür ederiz hocam. Çok sağ olun. Thank you.